Hey everyone, welcome to our social live. Uh, I'm Dan Janot, I play Edward Ferris in Sense and Sensibility. I'm joined by Tia A. Smith, who's the executive producer for Sense and Sensibility. Hello everybody. And of course our wonderful director, Roger Bob. Hey everybody, welcome. Yeah, it's nice to see you guys. Likewise, so, likewise. We are all, we are very excited for you all, the audience, to see our new movie, Sense and Sensibility, presented by Mahogany and part of Love You Wary, Jane Austen. We're very proud of the movie. We think it's wonderful. We think you're going to love it. And we have a couple of questions that Hallmark Channel has sent our way. So uh, let's get started. You guys ready? Let's do it. A game. Let's do it. <laughs> so first question. This movie is, of course, an adaptation of Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. Question is, how familiar are each of us with Jane Austen's books, and do we each have a favorite? Hmm. Hmm. I'll let Tia answer that. <laughs> also, he's being quite polite with ladies first, I guess, right? Yes. Yeah, there you go. In, 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 in Jane Austen fashion. Yes. <laughs> Curtis, we learned a lot of that also. Yes, we did. Um, yeah, I remember just falling in love uh, with Jane Austen in high school. We, we read a lot of the material, a lot of the books, and I just became a card-carrying Janeite after that. So mm. everything from Sense and Sensibility to Pride and Prejudice uh, to Persuasion, you know, all of those were just steeped in love and dreaminess and, you know, women-centered and the fullness of their evolution and may not having some of the answers, but finding their ways out and through it. You know, that was always just wonderful. In high school, um, I couldn't absorb it that deeply, um, but yeah. I just was really, you know, intrigued and I just loved how women were very present in the story. So favorite, I have to say sense and sensibility, of course. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did not read the novels when I was younger. I was too busy watching Star Wars 20,000 times. But um, uh, I did watch Sense and Sensibility, the movie, and I thought it was amazing um, when it came out. And I've watched a couple of iterations of Pride and Prejudice, um, which I think is fantastic as well. Um, I rewatched both of them to get into director mode for, for our film. Um, and I would have to say, again, my favorite is Sense and Sensibility. Yes, good call, good call. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I've always been, as we all are, like aware of the Jane Austen's stories because they're so much part of our culture, but I don't think I actually read any of the books until um, uh, two weeks before I started filming Sense and Sensibility. And I <laughs> It all comes out. I love it. <laughs> really? Is that real? Is that wow? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crammed it. No, but I had actually seen a lot of different adaptations of her uh -huh. various books. Because um, actually, it, here uh, in my family, we're kind of Anglophiles. We really love British uh, stories, culture. My wife's a huge Jane Austen fan. Mm -hmm. Georgette Hare, another Regency uh, writer of Regency romances. So I've watched several of the adaptations of different films and listened to a bunch of audio books. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think, I don't know, my, my favorite one, I mean, you know, like you were saying to you, uh, I resonated with this when you, I was younger, I didn't quite understand it. Like I was aware of the world, but I was like, I don't know if that's for me in a way, but watching the films and rereading and uh, reading the book for the first time. Um, it's kind of like, uh, especially as an adult now, it's wonderful how you see the interior lives of women then, yeah. back then, mm -hmm. you know, which was kind of gra groundbreaking, I think, for uh, novels at the time. You know, Austin was one of the first people to put women front and center um, in her stories. And I think I love being able to read it from that perspective, you know, as, a, as an adult man now and understanding everything that women had to go through then with all of the, you know, um, Pressures put on them, and the, the you know limitations put on them, I guess, and how they still conquered, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, uh, my favorite one, Sense and Sensibility, obviously. Shocker. What a thought. Okay, so uh, Roger, I got a question for you. You yes, have sir. you've directed and been an executive producer on many, many films. Can you walk us through your creative process on how you wanted to bring Sense and Sensibility to the screen? Yeah, so um, first of all, my partner in crime, T and I have lengthy conversations about, you know, um, 
what this feels like and how do we put the hallmark mahogany brand on this um because um you know there is an existing movie and we didn't want it to be like that we wanted to create you know our own product and so it was kind of like um just going through the material um and of course we have to shout out vanessa riley you know who's our basically siri for all things jane austen <laughs> um, he was our uh, our, our consultant on, on many levels and um uh uh from here to makeup to the mannerisms just making sure that one we were authentic to the period mm-hmm. and two um that um we put our own little spin on it which i think we did in the casting i think we did in the performances i have to give everyone a little story when i first met dan it was at a cast dinner he was <laughs> on one side of the table i was on the other side of the table we really didn't get a chance to interact the dinner's about to end Dan comes over, he's like, you know, we haven't even had a chance to, to talk. I said, well, come on, let's talk. And then I gave him a, a note. I said, um, I thought Grant was great in the movie, but I don't want you to be like that. And here's Dan's face. <laughs> <laughs> there goes all my preparation. All his preparation. Um, but I got to tell you guys, he's amazing yes. in this film. He's so cool and he's so suave everything who grant was not <laughs> and um, shout out to you grant which i love him but you know we just wanted to go in a slightly different direction with this character and i think dan nailed it and i can't wait for everybody to see it <laughs> thank you thank you roger i owe you 50 bucks for that uh, <laughs> um so this movie follows mainly the Dashwood women, Mary and her three daughters, as they try to make the best out of a bad situation after being forced out of their family home. Uh, can can both of you, Tia and Roger, tell us how you wanted to showcase their family bond throughout the movie? Um, yeah, I think it was important to be authentic again, to be real and for those tones to resonate. I mean, you're dealing with high crisis situation. You're going from Norland Park to a cottage, which was not so bad actually, after all, once you see it. But nonetheless, it was a shift for them. And those are the kind of shifts that we have in our own families respectively. So, you know, the tones of sisterhood, familyhood, um, how they spoke together and spoke to each other in warmth, you know what I mean? And then sometimes in frustration mm-hmm. and, and the nuances of comedy that, that uh, Roger pulled out that was brilliant also. Um, so, those are the elements that we really wanted to make sure resonated and even areas of grace, you know, seeing people for who they are right now, how they may evolve and um, still being supportive as a family and as a unit. That was really important to us. And again, the work lends itself to that. And also you as actors exuded that. Um, so, you know, it made our job easy there, I say. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got to tell our fans, it's all about casting when we do these films. And, um, you know, the the camaraderie between the Dashwood sisters and and the mother, um, the fact that they spent a whole bunch of time together offset. And you can see that on, on film, just in the way they look at each other, the way they smile, the way they kid and joke. It's very little subtle things um, that make you feel like this is a real family. And so if you can believe they're a real family, then you can believe um, them when they play off of each other, um, going through all the, the ups and downs and the arcs that they go through in this movie. So um, in addition to everything that Tia said, I think um, the movie was cast brilliantly and then you'll see that um, camaraderie um, in the Dashwood sisters up in, in the film. Yeah, absolutely. They already, those, those actresses had such a lovely f- familial feeling to them kind Correct. of as soon as soon as they met each other it felt like yeah. they were in that zone of we know each other we love each other we support each other and we tease each other you know it was great Absolutely. yep mm-hmm. and the- yeah. uh so the eldest daughter the eldest dashwood daughter eleanor played by deborah ayurinde meets uh edward ferris played by me and they form an immediate connection the question here was can i share more about uh our characters first encounter with each other so on the horse on the <laughs> horse yeah i mean that's all you got to do is ride up to a that's lady you and have a hat. <laughs> <laughs> the deal is done 
Yeah, it was a great, great entrance for me, for sure. Um, I think, you know, uh, something I thought about was that neither of our characters is expecting to meet the other one. I'm coming. So uh, the Dashwoods are now kind of guests in their own home um, mm -hmm. because um, Eleanor's um, half brother, John, has inherited the home. And now his wife, Fanny, is the mistress of the house. And she is my um, step sibling. I come to visit her, but I meet Eleanor. And neither of us are expecting to meet anyone. And suddenly we see each other. And I think it's just one of those moments where you, when you know, you know. Uh, we just see each other and there's immediately something there. Mm -hmm. And we need to kind of, um, you know, dance around it a little bit we can't quite uh, give ourselves over to it because of uh, various uh, situations but i think yeah for for edward suddenly i'm unexpectedly kind of blindsided by this charming intelligent beautiful woman that i was not expecting at mm -hmm. all and uh, and now suddenly i'm staying in her house and spending a lot of time with her and uh trying to figure out what to do with my feelings so yeah i think it's a quiet it's a it's a lovely kind of first moment they have as you said roger guy getting off a horse while the lady is uh, sketching in her petticoats like it's a lovely I, meet cute <laughs> it's, it's such an amazing hallmark moment i mean he comes in he's he's dressed shout out to our uh, costume designer kara san yes. he's dressed impeccably he's got this amazing top hat on he's riding on his horse and <laughs> sketching in the woods and then they first see each other and i have to say dan and deborah have the most expressive eyes uh, when they first see each other it's, it's, it's really amazing they're laughing yeah. <laughs> her her eyes yeah her eyes are incredible they kind of tell the, the whole movie they have it, don't they Absolutely. <laughs> yeah and you did a wonderful job on the horses too Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Did that was probably the thing I was most nervous about in the whole film. Uh, <laughs> you mastered it. No, you, you look like the Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and you you cut away right before I fell off the horse. <laughs> Don't tell those secrets. Don't tell. <laughs> So, uh, Tia, you are an executive producer on this movie. Also, you're an executive producer on Hallmark's Napa Ever After. What do you think, what attributes does this movie have that'll make it a great addition to the Mahogany franchise? Wow. Um, I think it's wonderful that Sense and Sensibility will line right up with those pillars, again, of sisterhood, of love, of family, of warmth, um, of things that are familiar within culture. So we had those in Sense and Sensibility, and it also translated in Napa Ever After, and all the wonderful efforts and, and movie projects that you know, mahogany is, is building. So to have this right now um, just falls right in line with it. And even visually, you know, there are specific decisions made that you want some kind of warmth and richness and vibrancy. And you could see that in some of the clothing that we had for Sense and Sensibility. Um, some of the production value, how green and fresh everything looks, the bigness and broadness of it all. So all of that lines up, you know, and it continues the mahogany brand. And we're proud of it. This is another one that they can put on the on the notch and uh, and represent very nicely. Yeah, wonderful. Um, uh, so, okay, what's next question? Oh, this is another question uh, for me. I'm gonna ask myself a question. Um, Edward is caught in a love triangle, a little bit of a love triangle, as he starts to develop deeper feelings for Eleanor. Without giving too much away, what can I share about Edward's journey on finding love? So, without giving too much away, there are, um, as as he says in the movie, there are complications. I love that. Um, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much in that word. So much can be uh, said in that, you know? Yeah. Complications. Um, so, Edward doesn't feel that he is free to um, follow his feelings. Um, and he is trying very hard to what's important to him is that he um respect and honor the commitments he has made before in the past the promises he has made to people in the past he wants to do that that's important to him um 
but also it's sort of conflicting with what his heart and mind are telling him now. Um, so it's a bit torturous for him. Uh, like I said before, he was not expecting to meet Eleanor. He wasn't expecting to fall in love. He wasn't expecting this at this time. And so he really has to grapple with what's the right thing to do and whether following his heart or um, honoring his his words is the most important thing. It's, it's a bit of an impossible situation. Um, so yeah, I think it makes for some interesting viewing to kind of figure out, first of all, what's going on with this guy, because we're not sure as an audience at first, why is he being like this? And then once we learn more to kind of wonder how, how are the, how is the couple going to be happy? Can they be happy? You know? Um, yeah, it's uh, it was quite a journey. It was an interesting <laughs> journey to go on. <laughs> Well said, Dan, without giving too much away. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> I was thinking, how is he going to do this without, without giving out the whole plot? So. <laughs> yes, we want people to watch. I'm trying to draw them in with a little bit of hints, uh, but not giving anything away. Yeah. it's Which is funny, too, when you're talking about a story that is, like, well-known by a lot of the people in the world. Yeah. Um, but for those who don't know it, there's a lot of drama. Watch it. Find out. <laughs> it's the age old, do you follow your heart or do you follow your head? There you go. Heart exactly. <laughs> so is it is it your sense or your sensibility? Oh, damn. Look at Mike drop. Mike <laughs> It's over. We're done. <laughs> That's it. We don't need to say any more. <laughs> All right. So we had uh, we had a wonderful time filming this movie, and we got to shoot it in Bulgaria and in Ireland. Uh, some you know wonderful exotic places. Uh, were there any um, behind the scenes moments we'd like to share? And do either of you have a favorite location you could talk about? Hmm. Uh, Tia? <laughs> See how he does that? Okay. So, <laughs> um, wow. I loved a favorite moment was when we were wrapping out in Varna, Bulgaria, uh, which is a wonderful island that's right by the Black Sea uh, in Bulgaria. At the end of the night, we did the electric slide. It was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. family. You know, it was a great way to say, hey, we did this. Let's let loose a little bit. It was wonderful seeing everyone in Regency Fair doing the electric slide, right? Um, I also love the Easter eggs. You know, the art department is always doing some interesting things. And <laughs> Roger didn't shoot his, but uh, they took our pictures and made them into Regency pictures and they're in frames and you'll see them kind of sprinkled throughout. So I thought that was funny to see our great, 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 greats uh, in the <laughs> along with the Easter egg of Jane Austen too. So look out for that. And, um, and then for me, this is the producer geek in me, you know, we had heard all about the uh, weather and what was supposed to happen in Ireland and we were shooting our exteriors. It was our last week of production. And, you know, the forecast was rain and, you know, all kind of interesting weather. And let me tell you, the whole week, no rain, except for the last day. I think we had like 15, 20 minutes at the start of the day Right. that happened. And I was just like, yes, you know, from the beginning, you know, it was just a wonderful experience. And we were just we were just given so much to make this happen. So. Those the are film you are definitely with us uh, on this. On this show. Yeah. Um, definitely the electric slide. Um, that's awesome. And if you follow any of the actors, I think they'll post it at some point. So you'll be able to see it. Um, and that, that was in the shoot. That was my favorite scene to shoot was the whole ballroom scene, which is amazing mm -hmm. because from the, the hair and the makeup and the costume design and the lighting design. And it was our big budget moment in the movie. So um, for me, that was my favorite scene to shoot. Um, and I think um, I, I don't, there, there's some story, there's some horse stories, but I don't think I could really tell them. They're kind of <laughs> PG-13, but we, we, had some oh my gosh. we had some interesting horse moments. 
on the show. <laughs> I feel like I feel like by not saying anything, people's imaginations yeah. are just gonna I, run I'm just wild. Leave that yet. Yeah. <laughs> the horses are, are 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 a secondary character in this movie. And they're very <laughs> <funny. laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's true. We had a couple of uh, you know horse co-stars, some Bulgarian horses, some Irish horses, and uh-huh. Uh-huh. they weren't they weren't always the easiest uh, co-workers. <laughs> but great, right. the sheep yeah. the sheep were very accommodating. They <laughs> ate and grazed and moved. Right. I just I, I wish I had had some scenes with the sheep, you know. But, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we were in such gorgeous locations in both the countries we filmed in. We were filming in this um, place in Bulgaria, in Varna, that was uh, most, it, it used to be a mm, royal summer palace, like Correct. 19th century royal summer palace, yeah. right? And so just uh, as an actor, being able to walk through these hallways, the high ceilings, the grand staircases, the beautiful giant mirrors and chandeliers it just kind of it does so much of the work for you the imaginative work you know it's like here we are we're in this world we really are physically here you know that was awesome um dan i I have a question for you can i piggyback on that so as an actor it's one thing to read the script but once you get into wardrobe and hair and makeup and actual location does that what does that do for you and your performance yeah, great question. I mean, I think um, it does a lot. Costume can really help me get into uh, the physical feeling, into the body of my character, you know? And especially costumes like this, you put on these uh, shirts, these vests, these coats, these great coats or overcoats, and you're, you're automatically kind of standing straighter and walking a bit more you know erect and it just it does so much and then you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like i don't see dan right now. Right. i see right. someone from 200 yeah. years ago you right. know mm-hmm. and yeah that goes that definitely goes a long way and then and then being in the that space with the the, the amazing um, locations we were in plus the amazing art direction that was done to make it look appropriate to the period that kind of finishes the work for you. You're like, I am in this world, you know? All I gotta do now is remember my lines or not sound too Canadian, you know? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it does It does so much. And the costumes were just incredible. We'd look at each other, you know, the actors would look at each other sometimes. We'd be like, can you believe we're, we're, we're doing this? We're getting paid to do this? Like beautiful dress up, uh, you know, beautiful game of make believe. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And everyone, I just feel like all the departments were really just uh, going all out and bringing their best work to, to to making this world complete, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Oh, yeah, which the, leads us into the next question. The outfits and the hairstyles in this movie are gorgeous. Uh, do either of you have a favorite style or wardrobe piece from the movie? Hmm. Roger, I'll let you go first. <laughs> um... Definitely, as I mentioned before, the um, the ballroom scene where everyone everyone's dressed up always in this movie, but it's true. The ballroom, the ballroom scene takes it to an elevated level. Um, I love um, Edward Ferris's dan- ca- dance characters um, wardrobe because I like wide lapels, and he has these nice wide lapels and the velour and the layering. Mm-hmm. So I think um, there's a there's a final scene between um, Dan's character and uh, and Eleanor um, 's character, and the you know and it's funny Dan said that because the way he was standing in it in that moment, and he has these boots, these yes. nice black riding boots, and I think that outfit was my favorite outfit. Cool. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, leaning into Dan also, I love the uh, waistcoat that you had. There was a vest. There's a beige kind of textured leaf uh, embroidery mm-hmm. yeah. with this baby blue and like brown sandy buttons. It's in the so details. nice in the details. And I don't know just the way. And we were outside. Everything you were just glowing. You were shining. <laughs> you were shining. Um, and then on the lady side, there was just so many from you know. The lace dickies and the feathers and the, and the you know fascinators to 
the Spencer coats, um, even Marianne's, I think Marianne's with the, you know, the rose appliquettes that were on the side with the lace and the, the V's and the, uh, it was just dreamy. It was insane. All of that detail. Um, and again, shout out to Karasan. We were slated for 20 outfits to be made and she made 68, her and team, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it, it was a lot of detail that went into everything. It's too many just to name which one you love as favorites, but those are standouts. Yeah, I have to think that, oh, go ahead, Roger. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I have to think that people, uh, this is gonna be a huge part of what people can enjoy about the movie, is just the, the beauty, the textures of the outfits, you know? Like that's just gonna be a whole level of uh, aesthetic beauty that they can enjoy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was, I, I was gonna add to that. There's a scene where we first see the, the Dashwood sisters and their mother, outside in front of their castle and it's like they're there and all their servants are lined up and it's just an amazing scene and um there it's the first time we actually see them all dressed up especially for outside and if the audiences notice each character actually has a very specific color palette that we stick to through through the whole uh film so um there was a lot of detail um involved in it um and so i, I just really hope everyone picks up on that and enjoys it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, okay, this is one of our last questions here. Viewers, yes, viewers are gonna love that this movie uh, follows the book. It's a real faithful adaptation of Austen's novel. If we could all choose any other Jane Austen novel to bring to life, which one would it be and why? <laughs> I'm going to say Pride and Prejudice only because that's the only other one I know. <laughs> <laughs> great, great answer. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see uh, a reimagining of Pride and Prejudice. I also like Persuasion. I think um, showing that unrequited love um, coming back together and does she go back to him or not? I, I don't know why I talk like that too when I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting into your Austin. I'm not an actor, people, and that's clearly seen. But yeah, I, I think Persuasion could be really interesting at some of her last work. So, you know, a lot of people say that there was maturity, even more so how she evolved, how women speak and articulate and make, you know, decisions. So I think that would be awesome. Um, and again, with a reimagining also of a pride and prejudice, that could be really, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Awesome. Just saying, I could be a great Mr. Darcy, just saying. Um, Listen, so. on Sarah's speed dial, Dan, that's a good <laughs> speed dial. They're not that good this team, no. <laughs> I just, uh, I actually recently learned about a, an unfinished Austin. There was, I knew about, I think one of her most famous unfinished ones is Sanditon, which they yes. recently okay. in the last couple of years have made a, like a British mini series of. But there was another one that I just learned about, an unfinished novel called The Watsons. And um, I'll just throw it out there. Maybe maybe we should remake that because then we can just, you know, take the story in whatever direction we want. <laughs> Good point. Good point. You know? Great. <laughs> she only wrote a couple chapters, apparently. So, um, okay. So here we go into our uh, final bit here. Uh, we're going to do a rapid fire game, okay, to yeah. wrap up this live <laughs> chat. Yeah. It's a... Uh, yeah. Quick, quick game of this or that, inspired by Sense and Sensibility, and love you, Ari. So we're each just going to quickly give our answer to this this or that question. So would you rather listen to an orchestra play or go dancing at a ball? Dancing at a ball. Dancing orchestra. at a ball. Yeah. Orchestra. 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 Orchestra, really? Yeah. You're not, what, you're self-conscious uh, about I, your moves? I, I just, I, you know, I love classical music, and, uh, you know, that's my thing. He has no right. Yeah, and then I have no moves. <laughs> then Other than the electric slide. Other than the electric slide. <laughs> okay. Well, T and I will go dancing. We'll see you after the show. Um, would you rather attend a wedding or an engagement party? Neither. No. <laughs> <laughs> wedding. You gotta go with the wedding. You wanna you wanna see the final result. Yeah, definitely wedding. Definitely wedding. You know, I'm going to say, I'm going to actually think, now that I think about it, I think an engagement party, because I think it's more relaxed at an engagement party. I think there's a lot of like 
uh, pressure and tension on a wedding day. You know what I mean? That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like would you there, but okay, Dan. <laughs> Lean <Leaning> in, Dan. <laughs> Moving along. We're telling a happy romantic comedy here. Um, so, would you rather go for a stroll through the park or uh, on a horse carriage ride? Horse carriage ride. In fact, I tried to relive that when we were uh, in Ireland. I got in the carriage and put my feet up and hands up. Did too. you? It was awesome. We went up 10, 15 feet, but it was it was wonderful and, and good for the time. And we kept on. We kept our day too, so I couldn't do too. <laughs> I get for a stroll. <laughs> That's amazing. I'd say I'd say horse carriage ride because yeah. I can go on walks through the park any day. <laughs> have, have have either of you actually been on a horse carriage ride before? I yeah. horse, all due respect to horses and they really smell that good. So, <laughs> I will walk through the park. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sensitive sensitive sense of smell. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I just think for me it's the novelty, the novelty of yeah. getting to, you know. And you can do uh, rave while you go by the people. Yeah. <laughs> you go. That's a part of it too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, would you rather uh, have a picnic or host a dinner? Picnic. Dinner. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I like dinner. I mean, picnics are nice, but like, I like a dinner because uh, you can control the, the environment. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And for me, I'm the opposite because I'm so used to making so many decisions and doing things like that. The picnic is just so freeing, and you're outside and you're relaxing. And yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah, stuff. less less pressure, like uh, the engagement party. Less pressure. Ah, yeah. That's <laughs> when you do this. <laughs> There's all these people riding by on horses, stinking up a picnic. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay, before we wrap up, I just have, I'm going to add one final question for you two, for Roger and Tia. When are you going to hire me again? As soon as possible. Yeah, yeah. Right. let's look at the calendar, my friend. Let's, let's do it. Great answer. Uh, thank you. So uh, that's it for our questions. Um, thank you, everyone who is watching. Thank you for joining us. We really can't wait for you to watch the premiere of our new movie, Sense and Sensibility. As I think you can tell, it was a labor of love. We enjoyed making it, and we're very proud of it. Uh, so tune in this Saturday, February 24th at 8, 7 central, only on our Hallmark channel. Tweet along while you watch using hashtag Sense and Sensibility. Thanks very much. That's Bye. Right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.